There we go. Welcome everybody to this week's Kubert Community Meeting. It is the 2nd of October. Um, kind of mind-blowing that it is the 2nd of October 2024, but here we are. Let me just post the link to the agenda into chat. There you are. Um, again, if you haven't already, please put your name down in the attendees. Um, and we will get started. Um, is there anyone here today that is new or hasn't taken the opportunity to introduce themselves before? If you would like to, uh, I'll mute and jump right in ahead and, and say good day. All righty. We will then move on to the schedule check-in, which to the best of my knowledge has not changed. It should still be the 22nd of October for feature freeze. Yes. And a GA date scheduled for the 12th of November. Uh, so if you're not already aware of that, then you've got, what is that, three weeks um, to shy off in order to get whatever you're working on in to be accepted for version 1.4. That. Have a quick look at our. Is this up to date? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, KubeCon EU 2025 has its CFP open. I haven't had the opportunity recently to go through and look at the open KCDs and DevOps days. Um, well, I'll just do it quickly now. Uh, so we've got Brazil, Indonesia, Ghana, and Chattogram for DevOps days. And then for, well, that was KCD, sorry. DevOps days, we've got Porto Alegre, Chicago, and Zurich. So if you're in or near or interested in going to any of those places and representing Kubevert, uh, by all means, uh, send in a CFB and let me know. I might be able to uh, send you off with something. It's also good just to know so I can promote it um, in places like that with Wiki. Um, all right. People are wonderfully adding to the agenda. So we will get started with Amar. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, so today I wanted to talk to you about a project that I'm working on. And I just want to gauge the sentiment of the community uh, regarding this project and also if anyone sees any um, you know clear signs of danger or risk that this project can introduce um, and maybe how we can avoid it or how we can tackle it so, so the way that we currently run uh, uh, Hubert CI clusters is um, all VMs all the uh, nodes are virtual machines and we are um jumping on an effort to make the control plane a container or a group of containers. We're just going to run a container containing the API server, scheduler, the controller manager, etcd, and this will be the control plane for a Kubert CI cluster. Now, why do we want to do this? Mainly resource saving. It will save us a lot of resources on every CI uh, run that we have to be able to reduce a count of VMs uh, provisioned by one. And once you do the math, you can see that this quickly adds up to big amounts of money, depending on the uh, node size per, uh, per test. Um, you know, some tests uh, run nodes containing 48 gigs of RAM and like very big uh, uh, amounts of compute. So doing this will go a long way into cutting the costs. Um, and I just want to share with you uh, that we are uh, planning to do this and see if you think that this will cause any risk or will introduce any 
failure or unwanted behavior in any of the areas that you are handling. I can share some experience uh, because we're actually doing the same thing in Cozy Stack project. We actually based uh, our solution on Kamaji project. The mm. few troubles you can face with uh, is missing uh, full feature ATCD operator. Uh, currently, mm. current existing operators are just uh, possible to provision uh, short time Actually, long-term ETCD clusters, but they can't recover the cluster itself. One of the solution could be use Postgres operator. Kamaji can support this, or mm -hmm. uh, just continue using one of existing ETCD operator. I can also add note that currently in SIG ETCD, we're currently working on developing our own ETCD operator, or actually official ETCD operator. And the next mm. two weeks should be uh, there should be decision uh, should we create um, should we create it from scratch or one of existing ktcd operators will be used uh, as base as code base for it. Mm. Um, that's a very interesting point, and um, I just want to follow up with a question: uh, the type of workload that you are running. Is it an ephemeral, is it like an ephemeral workload or like a long running workload? Because, um, for example, uh, in uh, uh, control plane, uh, running the, the uh, control plane as containers, we will be missing some features, but I don't think we're gonna, it's gonna affect how we do things. For example, uh, we're not gonna have, token renewal, auto renewal by Cube ADM and these kinds of things that you would expect from a cluster that you run with Cube ADM. Obviously, you can still uh, uh, have them somehow, but since uh, the clusters that we are running or the, the clusters that we are targeting this change with are short-lived, they live for a maximum duration of about uh, 24 hours, uh, sorry, four hours, So and the token usually expires in 24 hours. So it doesn't make sense to invest an effort into having the same functionality as you would expect in a long running cluster. So are those problems that you're talking about something that the ephemeral cluster as well will suffer from or how do you see this playing out? Uh, actually, I can share my experience of using Kamaji project. We use it for run long-term clusters. Um, we run uh, production workloads using it. And I can say that mm. everything is working pretty fine. Uh, as base for uh, storage, we use our own ETCD operator, which we started uh, with a community. And currently we're working with six SIG uh, ETCD to moving this ETCD operator to them. Uh, mm. Kamaji is working fine. Uh, one more point that uh, it supports automatic certificate renewal and tokens. And yeah, how are you going to provision workers? If you use cluster API, uh, the cube weird uh, provisioner, sorry, cube add mm. config provider will issue short tokens anytime when you create new new virtual machine. Mm. Well, um, this is quite informative. And uh, I will try to put this into consideration. And technically speaking, like, um, I don't know if this answers your question, but I'm just sharing with you how we plan to do things because maybe you see something that can be enhanced with our approach. So my approach for how we wanted to handle the joining of virtual machines or like nodes in the cluster, they will still be able to join using KubeADM because we will create some of the are back uh, and uh, bootstrap resources that cube ADM relies upon to be able to like do cube ADM join. So to, to do a cube ADM join, you need like a bootstrap secret and some are back roles. So we're going to have these, but we're not going to have the ones that do the renewal of the token. So this was how we planned to uh, handle this. Um, Sorry, uh, can, I, can I can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. 
Uh, no, just a note. Um, I mean, what Amar is talking about, and I mean, what you guys are talking about, the, I think we're getting a bit out of scope because uh, we're not actually talking about like provisioning. Is my audio fine? I see some frowning from Andrew. Um, okay. Uh, is this better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, I think it's just a bit out of scope. It's like, I mean, I mean, we're not talking about like provisioning clusters dynamically and doing things like this. This is just about Kuber CI. So, you know, cluster uh, spinned up by Prow, uh, you know, by uh, like um, our CI lanes that just have to run a bunch of tests. So they're like short lived cluster, like Amar said, for like four or five hours. So this is basically like us trying to move from um, VM, completely VM-based clusters, uh, which, you know, incur into some high cost in terms of like memory and, uh, you know, everything, compute, let's say, uh, to having uh, control plane nodes uh, as mere, mere containers, like not VMs anymore. The worker nodes, I, I think there's still gonna be uh, VMs, right, Amar? Yes, they will be. Uh, so this is less of a, you know, like production ready solution, but this is just for supporting like development and uh, the CI pretty much. So, I mean, Andrew, what, what you've been uh, telling us, it's, uh, it's uh, very cool, but I think we, I mean, it's not interested per se, interesting per se for uh, Cuber CI because uh, it's a bit too complex for our uh, purpose. Yeah, I got it. Um, yeah. Um, can I, sorry, <laughs> can I just put short note on this? Uh, Kamaji is like control plane operator. That's actually a tool written on Go, which allows you to spawn scheduler, control, uh, controller manager, API server, and connectivity. So you can easily uh, use it. It's fully Kubernetes compatible. So you can use a standard tool for um, generate tokens and join it all machines to come and bootstrap to control planes. Yeah, no, I mean, it is interesting, but the thing is like, I think this should be running somewhere all the time to provision clusters. I don't think we have such a place. Like uh, it's more of like, whenever you get a pull request, a cluster gets spinned up by Prow and executes all the relevant tests. I mean, maybe maybe this is a solution for a Mars work, a Mars work but um, I mean, something to look into, but. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I suppose, uh, I suppose the main question that I uh, want to ask is, is there any functionality in Qbert that will be affected by the fact that the control plane is not a VM anymore? No, I see. Uh... I see one problem that webhooks will not be working and aggregation APIs will not be also working until you run connectivity service because uh, virtual machine and uh, cluster networking will be in different networks. Uh, yeah, we do plan to tackle this by running the containers uh, in the same network namespace uh, using the same overlay network that the VMs are using. So the VMs can connect to the control plane. And most, like uh, all the testing that we have tried or like all the things, functionality that we have tried, um, kubectl exec, um, trying to get a log from a pod, uh, anything that you can expect from your normal Kubernetes cluster works just fine. So it's just about the um, specific Kubert uh, features that I'm not sure whether they will work or no if we introduce such a big change to how we provision the testing infrastructure for Qbert, that's what I'm trying to know or query about from you guys. Um, I, I have one input regarding this. So um, six scale maintains uh, some sort of benchmarks for uh, running, you know, scale or density tests in Qbert. Mm. Uh, a lot of these benchmarks are dependent on how the underlying uh, infrastructure is provisioned. So in, they are ideally just like three jobs each day uh, that gathers those numbers. So I'm wondering if, if there is a way to you know, continue to have an option 
to request the the infrastructure set up the old way. And then mm -hmm. once we are comfortable and have tested that the, the new container way um, does not cause a lot of deviance in those benchmarks, um, <clears throat> we can transition it uh, to that. And if it mm -hmm. does cause deviance, maybe we can choose to, you know, uh, we, we can make a delayed decision on when when to transition or if to transition at all or not. Uh, mm. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah. I, I wonder if that option is available in this effort. Uh, yeah, we try to uh, uh, have it be an optional change. We will not uh, um, have it be suddenly introduced because it's definitely a, a highly breaking change. And uh, I think I had, did have a look on uh, those SIG scale uh, uh, jobs that you are referring to. Um, if I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong, of course, I think th these are the jobs that like check how often like count of v, uh, VMI uh, migration, uh, rate of VMI migration, uh, um, a specific, a specific rates of requests hitting the API server, stuff like this. And on my investigation, I noticed that these are just dependent on the fact that uh, you have a reachable node port for Prometheus to like gather the metrics and output them. And so if the cluster, uh, I'm sorry, if the control plane is uh, a container, you should be still able to do anything you want. Uh, and it still, you should be still able to send it the same uh, uh, requests. And assuming that you do have the node port to gather the metrics, then it should be fine. Of course, yeah. uh, like more specific testing will be required. I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying that uh, um, at least at the current phase that things are at, uh, I don't think that it's going to impede those jobs, but definitely we will uh, uh, test it thoroughly and we will not roll out the change uh, at once. Yeah, no, I, I understand your, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, a point of making this work. So what I was trying to say is not specifically that the connectivity or the metrics will not be able, uh, like we will not be able to gather those metrics, but mm. I was more concerned about the value of those metrics. So for example, there is a benchmark mm. which tests the creation to running uh, time or latency of of a VMI, right? Uh, and if the control plane has different CPU behavior, then that latency could increase or could decrease depending on what kind of infrastructure change we are uh, making, right? So ideally, the point of this SIG scale test is to keep the mm -hmm. infrastructure same, the Kubernetes version same, and mm. depending on the change of a cube word code, find out the culprit of what is causing regression. Now, if we are introducing change in the infrastructure, then it's not an apples to apples comparison. Now we can't yeah. assume that the code, cube word code itself is causing the regression. It could also be the underlying uh, infrastructure. So. That's why I think it's important for the infrastructure to remain same uh, until we have found out that there is no pattern uh, or regression in, in, in making this change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is indeed a good point. Um, and we will definitely try to put it into consideration uh, while planning for this change. But yes, indeed, uh, thank you for explaining because yeah, it's not gonna be an apples to apples if we do such a change. Yeah, um, I encourage you to join the six scale meeting. Uh, once you have all of these things figured out, we can try to you know come up with a way on how to transition uh, from the old infrastructure to the new infrastructure. That would be amazing. Uh, I would be elated to join you guys. So uh, once we have like a, a ready to go pull request or like we have things figured out, I will definitely be reaching out to you. Um, actually, uh, there's a, a point here on the agenda about uh, Cube version 1.5 unconference. I wonder if that isn't a good topic for that. It'll be in about three weeks, uh, tentatively. 
the idea is for this exact kind of like cross-seek conversation, um, and we can give it a bit more time than we currently have um, in this meeting. And would, would that give you enough time to put something together in order to get um, people from different seeks to be able to weigh in on this? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, of course. It's going to be at the end of the month, so I think we're going to have enough time, of course, to prepare. Cool. Um, and yeah, that sounds perfectly fine. Wonderful. Um, right. One more question that we had in the chat, and even I'm curious about this. Um, was there any kind of testing done on how much of uh, cost saving uh, we are looking at when moving to this new way of provisioning control plane? Um, well, the exact math has not been done, but the estimates right, uh, uh, right out of the right out of the box, we are running a, a homogeneous cluster, meaning that all the VMs have the same size. So, if for a job, we say that we want a forty G like a node with forty gigabytes of RAM, then the control plane is gonna have forty gigabytes of RAM. If we Take one single VM out of the equation and still be able to maintain the same performance in the rest, like it, like the, the test itself is not going to be affected by us doing this change, then we have cut every uh, 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 job, like we cut the cost of every job by exactly one VM. So it can add up to a, a significant amount if proven to indeed not affect any of the uh, um, any of the other jobs, any of the actual testing itself. And in some scenarios, the control plane is unschedulable anyway. So you're just running it and you're requesting the same amount of resources for it, but you're not running any, anything on it. So it is indeed a waste of resources, though. Like it, indeed, like, like a, a large number of resources is being allocated to it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, no, yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the problem is that we are you using the same configuration of control plane for all the jobs, and not mm. really a VM versus a container issue, right? So are you mm. suggesting that? If we move the control plane to containers, the configuration of of the test according to its requirement will be easier. Um, can you just rephrase the question so that I make sure that I'm I'm answering it properly? Correct. So what what you mentioned earlier was that since we are using the same homogeneous configuration for all the tests. We are mm. wasting resources if we requ request extra resources, right? It seems mm. that that is the core issue of the cost ballooning up. So, can we request different configuration of test with the same VM uh, kind of infrastructure right now? Uh, well, uh, no. Technically speaking, what you're saying is actually a solution uh, uh, to the problem. If we were able to specify, uh, uh, to specify different sizes for VMs, like a, a non-homogeneous homogeneous setup where you can have the control plane smaller than the rest, then yes, this will indeed solve the problem. But it's like an a, a different approach, um, and it's going to, in the end, result in the same thing, and. It should be compared whether this approach or this approach actually solves the problem better. Um, I, for once, I cannot see or like uh, if you see definitely see like an approach being better than the other one uh, in any area. Of course, uh, uh, feel free to share this with me. But from my perspective, I think that this will end up achieving the same result as this. Assuming that obviously the container uh, change doesn't cause any other downstream problems. So this is why I was asking about the whole thing in the first place. Got it. I, I think, I think it was, uh, I mean, we should change that. Uh, of course, like it doesn't make much sense to just run every uh, VM with the same amount of resources if they're used for different things. Uh, but the approach is drastically different. Like if you, get the option of running the control plane as container instead of VMs, 
uh, it's also a huge benefit for uh, you know people using kubeCI on their laptops you know for just developing kubeer I mean containers are uh, just lighter than VMs I mean you have many more processes running on a VM on average than just a uh, a container running the bare minimum amount of things to have a control plane node so yeah I mean if you if you like get it stripped down as much as possible. Maybe the numbers, are, they, they don't diverge that much, but I think it's still valuable to pursue this. Yeah, mm. makes sense. And yeah. just one clarification yeah, question. We, um, we do have the rest of the agenda we need to get through. Um, we can return to this topic at the end, unless anyone, unless what you're gonna say is just like 20 seconds or something like that. That's fine, we can return. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If yeah, sure. um, otherwise, this we uh, this can be taken up on the Slack channel. Uh, we can start a mailing list thread, or we can talk about this at the um, upcoming version one point five unconference, which will be at the end of the month. Um, and before I move on completely, uh, thank you very much for that conversation. Um, hopefully, we can return to it. Um, so this is a, a new trial. This came out at least just this in the mailing list. Um, it's going to be using Zoom rooms, an unconference style with the day one. Um, this is relatively tentative for the core six to come together, spend a few hours um, going through uh, necessary topics ahead of uh, 1.5 development phase. With the second day for the smaller SIGs working groups and also cross SIG discussion, which might have been identified in the previous day, um, and also topics such as this. Um, uh, our Qubit CI moving to containers for the control plane. Um, like I said, it's a trial run. I'm open to feedback. You should all be able to see that in the calendar link there. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. I'm going to throw over to LA now so we can get through. Yeah. Hey. So a um, couple of weeks back, uh, we we discussed about uh, you know working on this design proposal. So. Uh, this is regarding DRA support for uh, GPUs or host devices in KubeWord. The proposal itself is little old right now, but uh, Varun and I are working on getting that updated. Just um, <clears throat> some few high level things. The DRA API has changed a lot from when this uh, proposal uh, was put up. Uh, and the latest uh, release 1.31. So we are, um, you know, currently looking at the the new DRA API and trying to update this proposal. I am almost on the verge of raising, uh, you know, those commits. I was just wondering if it would make sense to uh, <clears throat> create a follow up call sometime this week just to specifically discuss this proposal. There are a lot of nuances. I would like to, you know, dive into into that uh, in preferably uh, a separate forum. So I just wanted to raise that question here. Any takers for a DRA discussion later this week, which will probably be tomorrow. There's a bunch of people don't work on Friday. Alternatively, does this also make sense? Um, Alice would be interested, but is that for the rest of the week? So we could push to possibly next week, or would this also make sense? Um, Victor as well, happy to attend, but can't this week. Uh, does this make sense for a topic for the unconference in three weeks? Um, Would you like to get a actually, bit actually, Andrew, I was hoping to get uh, some kind of alignment going uh, in Before this then. week or early next week, so that you know we can agree on on some things and try to shoot for uh, this release instead of okay. pushing it uh, to the next release. So. We can have a discussion topic in the unconference, but specifically for this proposal, it would be nice to have something uh, early next week since a lot of people are out this week. 
maybe Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, is the CAPI group uh, still meeting regularly? Uh, no. It's not? Uh, we could use that meeting slot uh, for the DRA discussion, if that makes sense to people. That's... So yeah, that was one of the uh, items, is that it's 9 a.m. slot EST. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the other uh, colleague who works on this is in PST time. I was wondering if we can make it PSD uh, compatible. Friendly. Yeah. Which is three hours after, no? So that's starting at 3 p.m. UTC. Is that right? I'll find a time. Um, um, the people that are interested in attending, let me know if Monday or Tuesday suits you better. Uh, for me, that's going to be uh, at the end of the day. And in North America, that will be at the start of your day. Uh, um, going yeah. on a note to Kuvertival. Kuvertival. So, um, is that a note regarding uh, the proposal or no? Uh, regarding the meeting, because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Vladi wants also to attend, but uh, he's not. Uh, he's not here. So. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That'd be great. Thanks a lot. Uh, Daniel, seed code quality. Actually, it doesn't look like Daniel's on the call. Um, all right. So the seed code quality label has been renamed to Kind Cleanup. Uh, so if you're in the habit of using the former, please use Kind Cleanup. Um, and there is a proposal for the committee code quality uh, here that is listed um, in the agenda. Um, we might get a chance to look at that again when we come back after going through some things. Speaking of labels, uh, Hacktoberfest has begun. Uh, October came around real quick. We have the Hacktoberfest label enabled in a bunch of repos. Um, if you do see a good first issue, um, please keep in mind when encountering or creating uh, issues. All you have to do is uh, add the label. That's fine. Uh, also, something of mine, they're uh, back in I think, June or something. I sent an email with 25 uh, repos, which are inactive. I had a list. Uh, not here, it's in the email. Uh, I'll leave that to you. Um, Please peruse it if uh, you have any interest in one of those repos um, and don't want it to be archived, please let someone know. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and um, mark all the repos as deactivated in the repos and archive them, which can, un can be undone, so it's not the end of the world. Um, perhaps you've got the next point. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, as I mentioned uh, before, we're running KubeWirt clusters using Cluster API and KubeWirt uh, Provisioner for it. And we faced with the trouble that uh, failed nodes that virtual machines, which are running these ephemeral disks, after reboot, those disks are empty and they can't join back to the cluster. And I was just curious, maybe somebody knows uh, who should handle such cases, like who should recreate machine resources? Maybe can someone just comment on this? If not, we can just skip this topic and go forward. Um, yeah, if you do happen to know, pop the name in chat, um, and we can come back to this as well uh, if we have time at the end. Okay. We've got two PRs here that have been targeted for attention. Yeah, those are uh, mine. First one is introduces endpoint in slice controller for Kubevirt Cloud Provisioner, Cloud Provider. Uh, which enables more better handling for services. So if you create service inside of a user cluster, 
they're going to be propagated to a management cluster. And uh, now they have endpoint slice controller, which also will update uh, endpoints for this service. Uh, I'm just uh, worried that um, this um, project is seems to me is not very really maintained. Who should be responsible for handling this? I just want to put uh, information that I'm ready for uh, review this. Uh, not for review, for uh, I'm waiting for review for these two PRs. One is for introducing an endpoint slice controller and the second one for update vendor dependencies. Uh, Lugo said in chat that he would ask in cluster API kubevert. Okay. Uh, Slack, Slack channel in the Kubernetes workspace. The second one is also related to this. Thing. Nothing interesting there. Okay. Thank you. And I think you've got David Russell Tag as a reviewer on that. And he's, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the best person uh, for review. Federico, you've got the next point on the mailing list. Yes. Um, yes, it's just uh, about a warning uh, regarding a uh, change uh, removal uh, of an API uh, due to the Kubernetes uh, dependency update. Uh, because basically, currently, we are using uh, Kubernetes resource requirements uh, type for uh, such fields like uh, support container resources or uh, compute resources uh, overhead. And uh, ev every time we are going to bump the Kubernetes updates, if there are some changes in that struct, we will uh, get on Cascade uh, a new uh, API change for that. Uh, we are country, uh, currently not using that fields. We are not consuming them, but we are only using the limits and resources. Uh, uh, so there should not be uh, any problem, but uh, to have some stability together with the uh, LA, which commented in the, in the PR, we uh, are deciding to uh, drop this dependency to the Kubernetes struct and creating our uh, own uh, resource requirement uh, without claim in this case, because the claim field was the one that was causing uh, uh, the API update uh, in our side. Uh, as I said, there should not be any problem because we are not consuming that field and users sh should not uh, have that field populated. Uh, but since it technically is a breaking change, uh, I want to ask you uh, if there are any concerns or any issue regarding uh, around this. You can join the discussion in the email or uh, directly in the PR. Perfect. Uh, I, I just have one question. Uh, it, it's not regarding uh, concern. I think this field should be removed. Uh, it's just that since we have communicated in the mailing list here, uh, what is the general policy in communicating such things during the release time? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So I, I think there are two changes that were uh, rolled back. One of them was inside of the same release so that we don't have to communicate anything regarding that. The other, uh, which was in, I think, data template uh, spec or some, some kind of storage spec was uh, released since 1.2. So that might be something we might want to communicate with folks during the release. Uh, so oh, yeah. Andrew or 
uh, anyone else who has an idea of how to communicate please chime in I would have to go and have a look. This should be documented in the community repo. And if not, uh, SIG release. If not, we should document that. So you're saying that this, um, this will impact uh, version 1.2? Uh, yes, version 1.2, version 1.3, although it, the impact is zero because that field should never be allowed to use unless you have DRA enabled in your cluster. And DRA is still not supported in Kubeford. So technically, it should not affect any users. Uh, but it would be a good opportunity for us to you know, straighten out our communications uh, if, uh, you know, Future in future, we need to communicate other breaking API changes. Yes, uh, I just want to uh, say that uh, the breaking change is uh, also through release 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.0 because the support container resources was there uh, a lot, uh, it's, it's older than the computer resource overhead was introduced in the last release. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. We have two bugs. It's quarter two. Uh, create VM on ARM64 machine. I sit around to install and the OS failed. Um, CDI is not supported on ARM. We add x86 to the cluster to solve the problem. Good to uh, is anyone able to discern whether the dosi bot has the right answer? be a problem regarding um, like the image uh, permissions and ownership, like file system ownership information in the PDC. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, from first look, I can, I'm not sure if those who is actually right. Because I think he said that he was using SCSI, right? Um, yeah. Yes. Because see you on the SCSI bus. So yeah, probably those about is not right. Bom, bom. Uh, Antonio, is this in your field, or do I throw this to someone in six storage? Um, could be, but it's probably better if you throw it to six storage. Excellent. Uh, Michael, I see you on the call. My gut feeling is that this is just a misconfiguration, but I mean, if they take a look, it's better. Okay. Sure. 
Thank you, Martin. Customized components patches to change vert handle or resource in statement. Damage secretion error occurs. So the dosage bot does not have the right answer. If this is an issue with the operator, then is this something that we throw to Simone? Andrew, can you uh, show the error message again? Because it think they got a uh, cut because it's liking your score, right? How far? Uh, Yeah, okay, I'll just look it up myself. <laughs> this is too hard, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's quite a bit to get there. All right, thank you. Um, do you want me to tag you on this? Uh, yeah, it's fine, I can take a look. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're at 10 minutes to go, um, which means that we can return to any of those topics if people want to hang around. Um, I'll let um, people yay or nay that on their own terms. Um, but just in case people start to leave, uh, I want to thank you all for being here. A uh, reminder, please have a look at the uh, calendar for version 1.5. Um, and I think, I think that was it. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, and hope you all have a wonderful day and the rest of the week. We'll see you next week, hopefully. Um, yeah, did we want to return to any of the uh, topics conversation in the last 10 minutes before the top of the hour? Uh, I, I just had a quick question regarding the uh, CI topic. If Yes, please. Um, yeah. So when you talk about uh, moving it from VMs to containers, uh, would you still be using uh, pods as your uh, orchestrating resources, or would it be bare bone, bare bone containers? For the control plane itself, you mean the components? Yes. Yes, I mean the control plane component. Uh, no, it will run using freestyle containers. There will no, there will not be a uh, pod, but there can be. Actually, it will be nice if there is. Um, but I haven't like investigated it, or like it hasn't uh, uh occurred to me. Uh, mainly the reason why. Uh, there isn't uh, a pod is that we're just running the containers on the host directly so um, unless there exists uh, I'm sure that maybe podman supports the concept of a pod but um, I I do not see the benefit or like it doesn't seem uh, or like I cannot see what uh, will be gained from um, such a change so is there anything, um, any reason why you think this will be helpful or you think uh, it will add value? Um, no, I was just wondering, I think there is um, some kind of uh, value add in orchestration where for some reason, if the container dies or something happens, if it is orchestrated by a higher level uh, pod kind of resource, then it will be 
uh, brought back up uh, and the taste will still not fail. So there are just some advantages with, you know, orchestration mm. around it. Although I, I, this is just out of curiosity on how it is being um, designed right now. So, yeah, no, that's I a very good point. It's, it's a good point. Way uh, Amar, how do you um, put all the containers in the same namespace? Like enter namespace, you know, all these things. Okay, so the way that this was currently um, going to be handled, the DNS mask container, the container that uh, creates uh, network interfaces in the network namespace, will create a special uh, uh, network interface with a dedicated API that will be reserved for the control plane. So the control plane API will no longer be ending in 101. It will be something else, maybe like a number that is higher up in this cider block. And this will uh, this uh, network interface will be reserved for the control plane. And then yeah, once you're I'm, running... I'm, I'm, mainly, I'm mainly talking about like the network namespace. Like do they use the host network namespace and they just... Uh... You know, have the same view on. Uh, I mean, they are on the same network because of that, or they have like a separate uh, namespace. Did you notice? Um, I don't want to. I'm not sure if I'm going to be answering your, your question correctly. So, if if my answer doesn't quite cut it, you can feel free to clarify. But the, the overall uh, structure of how this will run is that the container is running in the same overlay network created by dns mask so it will be in the same uh, uh, network as the vms but it's not in the same network as the host although we may need to definitely forward forward the uh, um, the port of uh, the api server which will be achieved through dns mask same as what used to happen with the vms before Okay. No, I mean, I was just, uh, I think it works the same like it is now. I'm not, I'm not sure if Kubernetes CI uses uh, the host network namespace or just uses a new namespace, probably a new one. Uh, I was just asking because like by uh, creating a pod where you can run all your containers, like you know, the controller manager, queue scheduler and all those things, uh, it might just be easier, you know, to, to run these things grouped together. Uh, I think that's what I, what I was suggesting, I think, instead of like having a bunch of containers. But the thing is like, you can just do that with Podman, uh, Docker. I mean, if you're, a lot, yes. if you're running, it, I don't think Docker has a concept of a pod. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree with you there that it would be helpful if they all just had the same network namespace and this will be uh, configured using a designated pod. But uh, while I was testing this, I figured that the only entity that you need to be able to communicate with the rest of the cluster is the Cube API server. And if you just run the Cube API server and specify the advertised URL to be the URL that you have given to the network interface that you have created for the control plane, then everything works smoothly. You yeah, no, no, don't I mean, need, I, I, for I, example, yeah, yeah. yeah. My question wasn't directed to whether like things, uh, you know, like a, that you would make it work by using a pod. I was just wondering if it could but just be easier uh, because, I mean, mm -hmm. containers in the same pod, they just have the same main spaces. They share them by default, you know, so, but yes. I mean, maybe that's not helpful in this exact case. Yes, yes. Uh, in general, what you are saying is correct, though, like uh, them being in the same network namespace would definitely help. But yeah, so just to say, like in terms of functionality, this is indeed uh, taken care of by the current design. Did we have any other uh, questions or any of the other topics that we? Glided over the one or two, or two minutes left.
before we run out of time, we have to vacate the premises. Alrighty. Uh, Alate, can you please um, send out that uh, message about the DRA meeting next week? I'll put something on the calendar. Um, everyone, thanks for sticking around. Uh, thanks for the conversation, and we'll see you later. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone. Yeah, see you.